All right, good morning, everyone. I'm Joseph Kalanick, executive chef on board the Windstar Legend that we're on now. I'm... Um... I've been in the culinary, my culinary journey started in 1979, so I am 45 years um, in the kitchen. Um, I started at Dominic's Yorkshire House, St. Catharines, Ontario. Um, Stephen Chirico and I went to school together and his father was Dominic Chirico and he owned Dominic's Yorkshire House. And I went there to work for one weekend and basically I've never left the kitchen since. Um, I started my culinary journey at sea in 2000. With um, I started with Holland America Cruise Lines and then I moved on to Pullman Tour Cruise Lines and then I moved on to Seaborn and then because of COVID, um, everybody the earth kind of stopped, everybody remembers COVID, right? Well, I was happily um, semi-retired at home and living in Jamaica and I received a phone call from Windstar Cruise Lines and as I say, when they make an offer, you negotiate, and then they make an offer you can't refuse, right? So, and that's how I ended up here with you wonderful people, okay? So we'll start with the tour. We'll go in through here, and we'll stop at different stations and different sections, and then we'll come all the way around, and we'll finish here. If we can just hold the questions until the end, because the people at the front are asking questions of the back people, and then we can't really hear the answers. And so if you think of questions that you'd like to ask, just wait till we come back to the podium here, and then we'll have a little question and answer period also. All right, right this way, please. We have our own system here. Everything is labeled, so it's uh, recycling is at the source. So everything is is um, separated and segregated in each individual area, and then it's sent to the recycling station so that they can finalize it. And then it's much easier for everyone to finalize. Um, in this section here, we've got our main dishwasher. This is our Hobart. This is kind of like the Cadillac of dishwashers, the big one in the back. And so it's all computer controlled. Um, Echo Lab takes care of our chemicals and the computers that are on it. But because we're in 2024, we don't trust computers either. Um, we have manual uh, temperature checks of wash, rinse, and sanitize. Taken three times each meal period and documented for uh, HACEP, so hazard analysis, critical control points. Um, this way we can identify if there is a problem. Uh, once a month, Echo Lab comes in and they hook up their computers to our computer and they do a, a circuit test on it, just like the mechanic does to your car. Right? He plugs it in, finds out what's wrong with it, if there's an error code. On board, we have technicians that can also repair these. So the large one is for all of our plateware, and the small one here in front is also um, Hobart, and it basically runs the same way with uh, liquid soap injectors and sanitizers and then everything is air dry. Break this way please. Watch the thresholds please. You have a uh, Coca-Cola and olive and sweet salmon cream cheese, right? Mm -hmm. uh, good morning. Good morning everyone. Come right in please. We've got Coca-Cola and black olive database or smoked salmon and cream cheese with paper if anybody would like. We're going home for home so. So right into this station here, this is called Garamond Jet, right? Come right in, please. Come right in. So this is Garamond Jet. The guys here do, um, as you can see, the sandwiches are made for maybe the Yacht Club, if you've enjoyed the Yacht Club on decade forward, right? So anything that's made for the Yacht Club is made fresh daily. Uh, Christian takes care of that, and, and my chef of party, Joseph, they take care of salad dressings, they take care of sandwiches, maybe you had shrimp cocktail last night in the dining room, or any of the cold salads, maybe a, a lovely little Caesar salad or a market salad. Um, any of that comes out of uh, Garmanger here. 
any um, smoked salmon platters that you enjoy in the in the veranda, um, anything like that comes out of Garmanger, right? So cold, uh, cold production. Okay. Now on this side here, we've got our bakery and our pastry. So bakery and pastry, they share a station here. They work offset hours. Um, bakers usually work at night and then finish the products during the day. Um, Four o'clock in the morning, the breakfast pastries are just coming out for the for the veranda or the or the yacht club. Um, all of it is, is specifically coordinated for for timings. Uh, lunch breads come out just before lunch, no earlier than eleven o'clock. Uh, dinner breads, no earlier than five o'clock at night. I'm very strict with that. Um, that way, you get the freshness and choices of, of the ingredients and the product itself. Right? So we don't bake in the morning and then serve it at dinner. This is all baked and served. So example is that if you're in the candles or the quattro, the specific breads that go into those two restaurants, they're separate and apart from the other breads that we have on board the ship, and they are served and baked specifically for those restaurants at specific times. Okay? All the bakery and the pastry, all the breads are made on board. Uh, pastries are all made on board. Our pastry chef here, Marvin, right, takes care of all that. These are our, our pastry chef, senior pastry. Okay, so anything that you enjoy, maybe baklava or any of the, you can see everything's all wrapped and ready to go here for the yacht club. So any of the granola, these are granola here. If anybody wants granola, you're more than welcome to help yourself. there because it's kind of like a little phase everybody will get some of you will come out some of you won't we're still missing a few people from a tour a few weeks ago just kidding just kidding um so we have our recycling center we commented on the recycling of the separation and the segregation even to the point where if tomatoes come out of a box or lettuce comes out of a box or or it could be just a box of maybe paper cups, the box itself is fit into a box compactor, the box is compacted and then it gets wound with uh, plastic ties and it even comes with a little handle so the guys can pick it up and carry it and store it and then it's taken off the ship to recycling plants. Um, any wet garbage is uh, separated and segregated, put into cold storage and then because of the waters that we're in, we don't necessarily pull because we never really reach 12 miles out into the ocean. So everything is separated and segregated, held in cold storage. And then every two days, approximately, we offload the, the wet food waste to Shoreside to um, recycle the other Shoreside. Right this way. Right here. So this now, this is the big brother of the dish machine, right? We've got the big pot washer. And so this is in charge of the guys that work in this area. They're in charge of washing the sheet pans and the bacon pans, the, the big mixing bowls, the plastic laxons and all that. And again, the machine is computer controlled and, and by an Echo Lab computers, and they come in and they test and, and do their um, circuitry training on that. Right this way. You can just take a look when you pass this area. There's stock pots in here where we do our own stock. Our, so in the morning, it's the guys are still doing main production for room service. 
So they'll prepare room service over where we started in the dish room where with the coffee makers and all of that, the organization of the room service trays and all that is done by the room service guys. The, the meals are prepared and presented here and the room service guys come and pick them up from here. So this is a 24 hour operation basically. Um, if you've had any of the fish in the evening or at lunch, Mr. Mookie in the back here, um, he takes care of all of our, our fish. Um, any of the lobster that you've had or if you were here, um, you know, we had what the snapper last night, or any of the products that are seafood related, any of the hot appetizers. Mr. Mookie and his team take care of that. Robert here on the end is my my assistant. He's one of my sous chefs, and so he directly assists me with whatever whatever I need. Um, on this side here, we've got our hot production line. So we've got Callie and Francisco and Jason, and now they take care of they take care of the different uh, featured items that we have on board the ship. So any of the stocks and the sauces, and we do with all that. We coordinate all that with the uh, the guys. So if it's chicken stock, it's made from fresh chicken bones. If it's veal stock, it's made from you know like your demi glace and all of that. It's all taken care of by the uh, the guys here. So meal bones directly come out from the uh, uh, freezer. We do mirepoix, carrot, and celery, wheat, bay leaf, peppercorn. We take care of all that. We put that into production into the ovens. And now we add tomato paste. We take that out. We put it into fresh hot water. Um, and now we boil that with red wine for about three days, right? And now we have demi glaze, right? So that can be used for any number of things like the sauce that goes for your steak or whatever it happens to be. All right? Right this way, please. <laughs> All right, so we kind of get together for a little question and answer period now. Um, this is one of the smaller ships that I've been on and one of the smaller teams that I've, I've worked with. Um, again, I'm Joseph Kalnick, executive chef with Winstar. I've been here about two years now. Um, the largest team I've ever had was Casino Windsor, Windsor, Ontario. Um, I had 750 in the kitchen. Um, this is a team of about uh, 30 I have here. Um, with the larger ships that I've been on, some of the Pullman tour ships, I would have 150 staff in the kitchens, right, and organize a team like that. Um, going back to Casino Windsor, we had 23 outlets that we took care of. Um, it was a food factory, basically. We would have 250,000 people uh, would eat there in a 24-hour period. It was over a million people a day would visit that. This is before 9-11. Um, after 9-11, it went down to maybe 200,000 a day, right? It was pretty dramatic. It was pretty dramatic. Like, you know, and everything else in life, we lived through that. We lived through SARS. We lived through COVID. We, you know, the strong survive, and this is what the world is. Um, we have galley. We do a cooking demo. Um, in the veranda in the next 15 minutes if anybody wants to come and join us uh, We'll be doing Italian seafood chowder and um, Chicken and mushroom and a vol -vol, right very regional uh, food for for the area that we're in um, And if anybody has any questions, I'm here to answer a few questions if you'd like So the kitchen operates 24 7 basically yes because we have different teams that come in um, we've got guys in the kitchen at 4 o'clock in the morning, slicing, dicing, chopping, making sure your omelets are fresh. You know, everything's cooked. And like I say, all your um, breakfast pastries are just coming out of the oven as, as as you guys are waking up and having your coffee and going to the veranda for, for breakfast or, or many room service orders this week also, and they take care of all of that. So your team must work the shift somewhere at night. Yeah, yeah, somewhere at night. Just like a regular factory, basically. So we have teams that work. Um, offset hours. Uh, we have production guys that come in and they do all the 
the cold platters and all that for breakfast, um, all the fruit chopping, slicing, dicing, and all that, taking care of mostly on the night shift. Yeah. Anyone else have any questions? You say you have 30 people right now on your team? Pardon? You say you have 30 people? About right 30 now? on my team right now, yes. Is that typical or is it because it's a reducing capacity for Well, it? yeah, it, it's like everything else. If you don't need all the people, you don't have all the people here. So <laughs> when the ship is full, I would have um, 40. So, okay. but considering the amount of guests to crew ratio, you're still looking at uh, basically one to one. They actually, we have more staff on board the ship than we have uh, guests right right now. So basically, it's it's one to one, one to one ratio, and that's probably the highest ratio of any cruise line going right now. Some of these large ships are um, thirty-five and forty to one guest or one and one crew member to forty is usually how the large ships are operating right now. So you can't get the same, you can't, there's no way that you can get the same amount of service uh, based on, on those types of principles. Okay? You have a new plant-based menu? We have plant-based, you can see on the dining room menus or in the veranda, we have um, SOS, they call it. So no sugar, no salt, no oil, no gluten. Um, uh, the whole program is sponsored by the uh, American Health Association. Uh, we're in uh, conjunction and association with them. And so all of our uh, recipes and all that are, are produced by Cali in the back um, here and uh, Francisco, and they take care of all the plant-based stuff. So whether it's for the veranda, whether it's for breakfast, whether it's for uh, lunch, or whether it's for the dinner menus, um, they take care of all that. So we have appetizers, we have salads, we have soups, and we have entrees that are all plant-based. Okay. Yes. In the last room there, there's like a large round. Thing labeled garlic January 30th, January 20th. Right, right. So we make our own black garlic on board. It takes oh, okay. about 21 days, 17 to 21 days, and that would be used for the, the candles, right? So that okay. so in the candles on the plate, and plus it's used for one of the James Beer Foundation uh, dinners in here where the black garlic is we make it on board. So we were basically roasting and fermenting garlic, and it'll take uh, 21 days to make black garlic. Okay. Everything is scratch. Everything is scratch here. Yes, ma'am. Yes, we have a special, we've got a rest, we've got a crew restaurant and an officer's restaurant. Um, we have special uh, meals for them. Um, everything's posted in the, in the kitchen here. And so it's more, um, as I say, ethnic cuisine. So we do Indian vegetarian every day. We have um, Indonesian food. We have Filipino food. We've got some dishes from Brazil, depending on you know, the crew that's on board, and I design the menus based on the crew that are on board. And, you know, we have always KFC fried chicken and KFC gravy every embarkation day. You know, it's something that the crew really looks forward to because on embarkation day, even if you can get out and try and find a KFC, this is one of those things. This is one of their highlights of the week, as they say. So now they can sit down, have a nice, decent lunch, KFC chicken, KFC gravy, a nice bowl of french fries, that KFC coleslaw, and all that is made genuine uh, based on, as they say, captured recipes. Is that a proper way of saying it? Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Anything else? How many people are on board right now? I can't really say. You could check with reception on if, if it really is that important. I could call reception for you. Okay, no problem. Anybody else? Have a great day. I want to say thank you very much for joining us today on our galley tour. You can just set your glasses or your or your little plates right here, and somebody will take care of that. Like I say, just like at home, the only thing left will be the ring. <laughs> you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you so much. We'll be doing cooking demo in 10 minutes in the veranda. So that's okay. deck seven where you have breakfast and lunch. Thank you very much. Have a if you're not already subscribed to the channel, clicking the picture with our faces on it will subscribe you. The box on the right has playlists of other videos you might enjoy. Thanks for watching.